our gear down there. We've got everything ready to go. Uh, so if you have any, if you come and you feel like you might want to do a little sparring and light, fun sparring, then, then bring a, bring your gloves. If you have a headgear, fine. If not, there's some down there. Um, you know, and it will be a very light and progressive practice that, you know, it's one of the things that I'd like uh, for some of you to get more involved in. If you, if you're interested, it helps solve a lot of problems when you, you, you get a chance in Tai Chi Chuan push hands, push hands is the, is the f foundational part of sparring. You go from push hands to sparring because push hands eventually becomes like sparring because the, the, uh, He's trying to penetrate me. I'm trying to penetrate him. I'm trying to take his balance. And so it raises up that mentality and expectation and accountability um, all at once. Then so when it comes to just separating from cloud hands to going into something else, then, it, it, you know, it's almost kind of natural, especially if you do the same progression. All right. So uh, that's this Saturday. Anybody who's on Patreon. Members and students, y'all are all welcome to come down for those Saturday practices. Next month, we will probably move it to the third Saturday of each month because we had a few people who just couldn't make it because of that day. And so I thought, well, you know, the third Saturday works for me just as easy as the any other Saturday. Uh, will you be there this coming Saturday? This Saturday, yes. The following. Okay. Okay. Oh, with Scott, Samuel Scott. Okay, good. All right. Uh, also, uh, we're going to be planning to uh, go with Ryan and a few others to do uh, to either cheerlead, participate in whatever levels at a uh, the push hands competition that was in where Columbus, was Ohio. Columbus, Ohio. OK, um, so uh, we'll talk about that more. That's not until March. But I'd like for you to put it on your calendar. So, Ryan, if you can, you send me some information. We'll get that out for everybody so that they can get it on their schedules. I would put a group together, jump in a van or something, and go up there. All right. Um, so tonight, if there's not, if there's not, is there any questions online that needs to, anybody got an announcement? We're all good. Okay. All right. So tonight, what I want to do is first. Uh, one of the things Ryan's working more on, Bader is just on the cusp of it. Bob Speed's done it and worked on it before. But, um, you know, at different levels of your practice, you're first just trying to learn good mechanics, good technique, and those types of things, right? Actually, you're going to want to maybe try to use it a little bit. And it can be playful. But in Tai Chi Chuan, it's called Fa, Fa Jing, okay? And it just means a little explosive power. So we practice explosive power first by just learning to have good mechanics and technique with on. And that power penetrates. It's not a heavy power. That's not as hard as I could hit him, stiffer this way, just a little right? But the idea is that I learn how to administer the power through him as compared to, to him. And notice he didn't know which one I was doing, but if he if he responds naturally, he can feel it when I'm penetrating and when I'm not. So I don't want to go with perfect technique. That sucks. Okay, there's no power there. Nothing transferred to him. Any tension you might have in your body is power you didn't give to him. So you have to learn to have a frame and then make sure that you deliver all of your power to him. So the, the point of that is, is that good technique and good mechanics does not guarantee good power. Okay? That's a huge, huge problem with a lot of folks that we'll work with. Good technique and good mechanics does not guarantee good power. However, good power requires good good mechanics, and good technique. So there's a gap in there. And you're going, well, what's the other ingredients to take good mechanics and good technique to good power? Well, first, there has to be commitment. You've got to have commitment. You cannot be wishy-washy. You, you have to think through to penetrate 
that you're going to do something not to the goal, but through the goal. If you ever played high school track or something like that, any sport at all, and you heard your coach scream and run through the finish line, not to the finish line. Okay. So that same mentality has to go back into your practice. And for some of you, good mechanics and good technique is exactly what you're working on. And then memorization of power. Right. For others of you, like Ryan really worked hard this past weekend, <laughs> so did Abe, on elevating that up to another level. And so we wanted to uh, kind of blend those two things tonight. First, I just wanted to plant the seed so that uh, when we're looking at things like mirror hand, uh, G, on, like you just saw me do there, I want you all to work on it so you start to have some value to it that's a little deeper than just mechanics and timing. For some of you, it's going to be health, meditation, but I want you to have at least an opportunity to say, okay, I tried it, right? Safely, most important. So uh, Kathy had asked me some questions earlier, and to be honest with you, I, what, I've been doing this almost 30 years now? Uh, nobody is so advanced that cloud hands doesn't need to be worked on. <laughs> right. I've never seen a soul that had cloud hands mastered. All right. You might master it nine out of 10 times, but that's about as good as it's going to get. Right. But having good mechanics and <clears throat> uh, good, uh, uh, good lines of understanding about what you're supposed to be doing. So what we're going to do tonight is we're going to break it down a little bit. So if you're in your living room or hallway, whatever it might be, um, make sure you have a little latitude left and right so that you can move at least a couple of steps in one direction or the other. Thank you, Ryan. So usually Kathy's question was mostly out of the, out of a form, which happens all the time in Tai Chi, which is you're in a single whip and you're supposed to go into a cloud hand and then into another single whip. I don't care which form it is. It almost always happens. Right. So one of the things about cloud hands though, is no matter where your hands are, the direction that you're going to turn in, that hand is usually up, and the other hand will sweep down toward the Dantian. All right? That's step one. So that as I'm turning, that side I'm turning to, that hand is up, the other hand is down. The other thing, if you can't see it on TV, uh, on your screen, um, is that I, in this case, and I'm perfectly fine with it in this case, is I pivoted on my heel and brought my foot with me, all right? So let's just, now we're going to break it down to uh, some of the abominations, right? So you can check yourself with, all right? First is that, you know, you'll do the clear the table sweep and neither hand is moved, all right? Uh, the other thing you'll sometimes do is you'll leave the foot over there somewhere, uh, the other one that usually is, is I have to think about doing it is that when you sit back, your weight should be over that foot that you're turning to, right? And I keep my weight over there. Some of you have got the a magnificent ability to shift your intention this way while you put your ass over there in the other direction. We call it assitis, but it looks like so, that, like something, and I don't want to hurt myself, Right. Ryan's a master of it. <laughs> but the idea is that when you shift your weight over to that side, you keep it there and then your hands float. And by float, one goes up and one goes down and then you shift your weight. And then the process happens in reverse over here. I shift my weight over there. As my arm extends, my backside foot picks up an inch. And then I turn the backside foot picks up, and that's what gives me locomotion timing. Okay? All right. Just go ahead and get a few more reps so I can see what y'all are doing. And don't think y'all on the TV screens are going to get away with anything, too. I'm watching. That looks good, Karen. 
Okay. All right, Thomas, that looked good. And you too, Bob. You know, a couple things while y'all are online working it, Ryan, you can watch them. Thank you. All right. Is the technique of the arms and hands when you're moving, you know, uh, for right now, uh, if you can, let your head follow your shoulders. Okay. Don't gaze at your hands. A lot of a lot of instructors, especially if they're just teaching for health, will tell you to watch your hands and it becomes very hypnotic. It's also extremely hard habit to break. Okay. What you want to do when you're doing cloud hands by yourself is let your gaze, we did a whole mental meal on gazes, right? You want your gaze when you're doing cloud hands to become panoramic, right? Pretty much out here. Uh, let your panoramic gaze, you're looking at the forest, not at a tree. Okay. And let your head follow your shoulders for right now. Okay. So you're not trying to fixate on any one part. Let your gaze follow and be panoramic just like so. Let the hands open and spread out, but keep the thumbs in towards you. Okay. Don't let them flop around out there because it's easy to break. Go ahead, Thomas. Uh huh. Good. Okay. That's much better. That looked good. That looks good, Karen. Yeah, much better. Hey, Bob, speed, do that again. This time, make sure that you, as you're turning, that your left hand does a, it, that your left hand, as you turn, that your left hand does a sweeping dive right toward the belly button. It doesn't have to go fast. Yes. The reason I'm saying that is because on the screen, I could still see your left hand coming across it, which told me it was probably too high because I couldn't see below your Ellington. I couldn't see below your Ellington on your chest. And so once I saw your hand, I knew your hand must be coming up too high and then dropping. What you want to do is make it feel like it's going down a sliding board. Okay. Okay. <laughs> Uh, uh, yeah, uh, and so those of you online, uh, if you didn't hear Ryan, it, of course, what he's doing doing out here is that uh, if you're walking it, most of the time in the forms, in most of the forms, you only walk it in one direction. So when you're practicing by yourself, make sure that you walk at least an equal amount in both directions. But um, let's break that down just a little bit uh, mechanically. You know, if you're looking at your legs and your footwork, all that's really happening is that you're taking small side steps in one direction. That's all I'm really doing, okay? Um, I translated that as a, as a football linebacker. You would do the same technique, and it's called scraping. You'd scrape across the line of scrimmage. So as the tailback was moving across in front of you, you were tracking him, but you couldn't just walk, and you sure as hell couldn't pirouette, right, because an offensive lineman would put you on your ass. All right. So having that scraping feeling where your feet are chopping, chopping, and chopping is, you know, I don't care what you're doing if you're tracking down ground balls at third base, right? But to do that and do cloud hands, they have to be in sync. What's the one thing that's supposed to synchronize everything in your Tai Chi? Good, good. Look at that. Your waist. That's right. It should synchronize that so if you know what your upper body's doing and you know what your lower body's doing then that synchronization has to happen through here and to make it happen i wish i should put a pinstripe down my shirt but as it comes around the waist is what pulls this in and as i go back the waist is what pulls the feet and you'll notice that in cloud hands it's the opposite hand and foot. This hand goes out at the same time that foot goes out. And then it reverses. As that one goes out, that foot moves. And it becomes synchronized all through the waist. That's what you're trying to learn to do. Okay. Now, one of the things that interferes with good synchronization 
it just pretty much destroys good synchronization is predetermined application. Okay? So if you already have a predetermined application of what you're doing, it's very, very seldom that you're ever going to get it synchronized right. Because predetermined applications have different mindsets about what you're doing, and none of that is supposed to be happening right now because you want to be able to do, if all you knew was cloud hands, what all can you do with it, right? And so you don't want to have that. What you're looking for is that togetherness, the easiness, and the lightness all through it. Okay, any questions out here? No, did that help? Okay, so after you get all that, and I, um, then the biggest thing is just practicing, but not just practicing to say, okay, I'm gonna do 100 cloud hands. It's better to say, okay, I'm gonna try to do three right. Now you might have to do 200 to do three right. But the idea is that, you know, you will feel it when it's right because everything will come together. And let's just take one last piece of that. How do you go from cloud hands to single whip? Because in many versions of what you're where, where you're at now, the transition from cloud hands for most of you is to a single whip. Later on, it will be to parting horses main. It'll be to a lot of other things. Okay. Uh, so the right now, how do you do that? Where's the timing? Remember, it's going to be in the waist so that if I'm moving into a cloud hand and I'm going to do my single whip, what will happen is, is when I change my weight over, I will now be go right into my single whip into here. Okay. Where the buffalo tongue is out front, the southern hand is curled in right there, pretty much on your clavicle. It's a good idea to practice it right there. I'm going to get up closer to the camera so you can see. Right? So it's for just right here. I'm going to turn to the side. So if I'm pointing out this way, I'm pushing that bone up and out, holding the canary right here. Steve Foucault used to call it a buffalo tongue. And the other hand is locked down right here. If you're looking at me from the front and I'm hitting you in the nose with this, you can see that it's hard for you to see my face. Right? So the elbow's down, I've got a guard system up and I'm trying to penetrate. Now that timing happens, like I said, as you're drawing back and as that weight shifts back, then you just change. Now my weight's on my right leg and I can walk right out into my single whip. That's good. The one thing, too, that I would like for most of y'all to work on on your single whip that I see all the time, and I, you know, I, I, I know it's not easy to practice, is that when you're doing the single whip, you know, the, the technique here is not, it's not to turn and push or hit with the palm. That's not it. What you want to do is you want to turn. Now my head is just following my shoulders. I'm looking at my arm, and then it turns out at the end. The difference is a, between a pushing power and a torquing drilling power is very significant on his end. Okay? It makes a huge difference. So when you're practicing it, make sure that when you step out, that your waist is doing the work. And then at the end, when the palm turns, at that point, in reality, this is where the, the, the poor translation comes in. Because you will see some people come in. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to do this. All right. That, let's say he's got his. And they're coming in. And you'll see it go here. Right. And what you see, all you see is the uh, end point. The palm turned away or striking. What you didn't see is the part in between for us is that I take his balance and then I roll. And then now he feels like a worm dangling on a hook. And that's where your next part. If you think about it, if I come in here and I go right back into a cloud hand, I'm loading him up, right? I push, pull, keep it back. And we're now we're in a, well, we, uh, just a shoulder lock, okay? And all I did there, 
just move that way. Okay. He didn't know I was going to do it. I didn't know I was going to do it. Right. That's the nice thing about Tai Chi. Yeah. <laughs> I, I didn't know what I was going to do. I just know that that's how Tai Chi works. You're going to go in, circle back, come back around. Maybe it's a lot. Okay. Uh, so what I'd like for you to do for a moment is I'd like for you to do three cloud hand, three cloud hands, single whip, and then do three cloud hands coming back the other way and a single whip in the other direction. That's your exercise. Like that. Uh huh. Good. Mm hmm. All right. Here, keep on going. Keep on going. Okay, give it about 30 more seconds. Do you have any questions or comments, Peter? Don't do it as much. And exactly. Peter said it was a little harder going in one direction. And, um, you know, that's one of those things that as a practitioner, we talked about this, I guess, with the students on Saturday, plug and play. Plug and play. You know, when it came out with Windows 98, it changed everything. Right? And it changed my Kung Fu because it gave me a phrase to help me understand what Sifu Chin was trying to teach us, right? That the form is sometimes a box and you get caught up in the trap of the box, but it's also progressive and you feel like you're accomplishing something and things are moving along. But in reality, a little bit later, you realize it's just a form. You can't sing twinkle, twinkle, little star, but it's so good so many times, right? But to make it right, you have to pull pieces of it out and then try to make those pieces right and then plug them back into the form, okay? Uh, so if you're not working on, don't ever try to memorize a form in both directions. If you learn a form and it shows up fine, like the fire set, but the fire set is A, B, C, D. It's, not, it's just an alphabet. It's really more or less the Tai Chi alphabet. So what I'd like for you all to do is to try to plug, pull your cloud hands out and really put your attention on the um, the mechanics and the timing and the line. And don't worry so much about application. And just look at what you're trying to do with it. And power will come with your improvement of the synchronization and timing. Right. So uh, are there any questions on, on screen? No? Just give me a thumbs up if you're good. Okay. All right. All right. So now... Let's do a little bit of, tell you what, <laughs> to some of your questions. All right, here we go. Let me get my stuff going here. All right, we're going to do a little Tai Chi posting to check on a few things, okay? And the first thing we're going to do is let's just do a single whip in this direction. Hmm? Uh, we can all do it together since this is going to be in pretty much a non-movement, right? I want you to get out, and I'd like for you to extend out what you might think of as a perfect single whip for you today. And we'll begin. Just looking for one minute. I want you to be still. I want you to be focused. I want you to put a little root in your legs by spreading your legs a little bit. Sit down. Build a little sweat equity in your practice. Mm -hmm. 
good breathing. Pretty much nothing should move except your lower abdomen. Take a breath. Good. All right, let's just do one cloud hand over. Draw it together. Out you go to the other side. Here in the beginning, I just want you to focus on being light and right. As you go further along, you can add other qualities to your posting time to help you improve, get stronger, smarter, clever. Good. I'd like for you to sit back and tell you what, let's just hold the baby. Step out and we'll go into a brush knee. Check everything. Make sure that the the arms are tombe, that they're connected. Good. Sit back, stretch it out. There you go. Turn it around. And off you go to the other side. Nice. Remember, you're trying to make it light but connected. Bader and Ryan and Bob Speed, y'all can add a little bit of uh, pulsing to it. And if you're not sure what that means, then don't do it. Good. Sitting back, I want you to just turn into a neutral position. Okay. Step this way, Brian. Good. Just a neutral position, just like so. Quiet and still, nine breaths, lower abdomen.
Good. Bring the fingertips up to just in front of your heart. There we go. Very grateful to have a chance to practice and to be with y'all. To put a little sweat equity in my own life. Open the palms out into the world. Good. It's a little after six. All right, so... uh Everybody good online? Good, Sifu. Thank you. That was yep, good. Thank good. you. Yep. All right. Well, then I'll see you later. All Take right. care. Take care, Thomas.